Um, my name is Pierre, and I'm going to talk about a library I have written, which you can find at my GitHub page if you're interested, uh, which I hope you will be when I'm finished with this talk. Um, before we start, can I get a quick check? How many of you are familiar with or have been programming in C Sharp? Okay. And um, how many of you are familiar with the IEnumerable interface? in C sharp. <laughs> okay, not as many, but that's good when I still have something to talk about. Um, so what is an numerable this library? Um, it's a library I have written to make it easier for you as programmers to express your intent clearly when writing code. Uh, specifically when working with um, collections of elements like an array, a standard libra library container like a vector or a list or something like that. Um, the library works by you uh, by wrapping collections through with a reference um, through a function call. Uh, the function returns an object which has lots of functionality that can be used. Um, to operate on the sequences. You can reduce the sequence to a single value. You can transform the sequence through filtering. Um, and you can chain various operations on a sequence together. Um, and a feature of the library is that things are lazily evaluated. So as you chain, chain the operations together, um, you will obtain an object which represents all the operations thus far, but doesn't perform any operations until you actually start iterating through the sequence. Um, the main purpose is to make code more clear and readable and to reduce boilerplate like loop variables, etc. So why did I decide to make enumerable? Um, C++ doesn't have very good support for working with generic collections of elements, specifically sequences of elements. Um, other languages are way far ahead. Um, as an example, if we have a collection, an array, um, and we want to find the largest element in this vector, we could write a normal, um, a normal for loop that looks like this. It's easier with the ranged for expressions in modern C++, but we still have to declare a local accumulator variable. We have to perform an operation in the loop um, to obtain the largest element. Alternatively, you can use the functions and methods that are available in the standard library, um, but it's still pretty clunky. You have to pass a begin, begin iterator and an end iterator for your collection um, when, you, when we really just want to operate on the collection itself. Um, using the library, we can instead write it like this, where we wrap the collection in a function call. And how do we use the predefined function max to find the largest element? Or we can reduce it using an, any kind of function or functor object. Another example is where we might want to um, filter a sequence into another set using a predicate of some sort. Here we want to find odd elements in a source sequence of integers, and want to put it into a new container. Um, generally, it's a bad idea to modify a collection as you are iterating through it. Um, so I'm not doing that in my examples. Um, using normal C++, it can look like this. Using the standard library functions, we could turn it into something that looks like this. Um, here we still have to pass begins and ends and another begin and then the predicate. 
alternative lead could be written like this where we obtain a sequence representing object. We pass our predicate to a where function and the where function returns a new sequence object which represents the source sequence filtered with the predicate. Then we call the two container method which returns a container of a specified type with the elements from the source sequence filtered with the predicate. Another example which is pretty common is to transform a sequence of elements. We might want to refine it somehow. Here we have a, um, a source container filled with integers and we want to turn them into a string collection. Um, can write it like this or like that with the standard um, standard library functions, um, or we could write it like this, where we again wrap our source sequence. Um, here we use select and pass a transformation function. It accepts an integer, returns a standard string, um, and then again we call to container, pass along that we want to store it in a standard vector. Now, string vector, string vector will be a standard container containing standard strings. Um, and these are pretty simple examples. Um, as soon as you start working with multiple collections at once, things become more uh, uh, complex. We have to have multiple nesting levels of loops in our program. We can try to hide this by um, replacing some the code that would be in nested levels in function calls, um, but we still um, have to write a lot of boilerplate to get things done. Um, and the library is uh, intended to um, to make you as developers spend less effort on performing the task and solving the problems that you have to have at hand, to focus more on the algorithms and how things should be connected, um, and less some the boilerplate around it. This also leads to less error-prone code, as you no longer have loop variables that you could accidentally do stuff with, which you shouldn't. You don't have multiple nesting levels that you accidentally put them in the wrong um, level. And the logic of the program becomes easier to follow, Um, here is an example of a problem statement, which I got from a Stack Overflow question. Um, since this uh, whole library is um, inspired by the enumerable interface in C-sharp, this question is regarding C-sharp and how you could form a, a um, how you can solve this problem. Um, the problem reads as, I want the first chapter of a book that's exactly 42 pages, written by an author whose name is Adams, from a library in London. Um, the objects we have to work with are library, book and chapter. Library has the properties name, city, and a collection of books contained within the library. A book has the properties name, author, and a collection of chapters in the book. And the chapter simply has the properties name and number of pages in the chapter. So a way to solve this problem using the library, using I enumerable, is through these lines of code. On the first line, we wrap a collection of libraries with a function called to enumerable. It returns an object representing the sequence of libraries. On the second line, we supply a predicate where we filter out the libraries which are located in London. Um, 
at this point, after the wild call, we will then have a sequence object which represents all the libraries in London. And now, um, if we were to use the select method to select the chapters or the books in all of the, all of the libraries, we would end up with a sequence of smaller sequences of books. All the all the books in um, which would be all the libraries in London and all the books in each representative library. But using select many, we can turn this sequence of sequences into a big sequence, which we can continue to work with. Um, so now we have a object which represents all the books in libraries in London. And we want to filter out the books written by some bloke named Adams. Once again, we use select many to turn a sequence of sequences into a big sequence, which now represents all the chapters written by guys named Adams in libraries in London. And from this sequence, we want to obtain the first element, um, which has exactly 42 pages. Yes? What happens if the selection is empty? There is no such chapter. Um, this version of first will throw an exception. Um, there are alternatives, first or default, which returns a default in initialized um, type that would be selected. So a default initialized chapter. Um, there is also first or value for um, which you can supply a specific value with to use if the sequence turns up out empty. Um, and if you want to start using or experimenting with this library, it's pretty easy. You just clone the repository, you add an include to your list of includes, and then you start hacking. Um, the library is um, headers only, so it's very easy to get into your pro uh, program. You don't have to worry about runtimes or different versions. Um, Short question. Have you tested it on several compilers? or? Uh, yes, platforms? I have. Uh, the GitHub repository is hooked up to um, AppVayer and Travis CI, so it's tested on Clang, GCC, and uh, Visual C. And it also works with all of those. Um, the GitHub page, readme, contains a, an introduction as well as a reference for all the functions. Um, um, and you take any collection you want, pass it into the enumerable function, and you can start play with all the methods. Um, now we're getting to another, the second part of the lecture, um, how it's implemented under, under the hood. And can I again get a feel of you. How many of you are familiar with the concept of mixins? Okay. Um, how many of you are familiar with the curiously recurring template pattern? Okay. And lastly, how many of you know about expression templates? Okay. Um, these are all core, um, core concepts that uh, I make use of in this library to achieve this, and we'll go through them one by one before we start digging into how the library itself is implemented. So first out, there is the concept of mixins. A mixin is a, could be said to be a set of functions or methods um, which you use to decorate another class with to add functionality functionality to that class. Um, if we were to make an example of 
a maxim. We could use single, the singleton pattern as an example. Um, here we have a logger and a rocket engine. We both have a get instance method, which returns the only instance of that class. It would be cool if we could put um, the implementation of get instance into a maxim and decorate our logger and our rocket engine with that functionality. Um, being C++ developers, uh, the only way we know with which to put functionality into a class is through inheritance. So a first guess at how we might want to implement this could look like this, where rocket engines inherits from singleton. And our singleton um, implementation would look like this. Now, there is a problem with this, and that, that uh, um, the singleton implementation doesn't know what, wouldn't know about the type that it needs to create with the get instance class. Um, since it's um, Um, since inheritance doesn't work that way. So we have a problem with which we can solve with the curiously recurring template pattern. And in essence, the curiously recurring template pattern is a way to pass type information the wrong way in inheritance graphs. So we take our singleton class we turn it into a template class, and the type which we pass into the template is the type that is going to inherit from singleton. Now we can write a implementation of get instance that makes use of the supplied type, and our rocket engine can inherit from singleton um, instantiated with the rocket engine type itself. So now we have now we have mixed in functionality into the rocket engine using the curiously recurring template pattern. And the last core concept is uh, expression templates. Um, it is expression templates are a way to encode into the type system and a chain of expressions or operations. Um, it's very common in linear algebra packages where it's used to um, help the compiler optimize things. Um, we have an example here. At the top we have a vector interface class which uses the curiously recurring template pattern. Um, it only defines an indexing operator. And since, uh, since we know that the instance of this class is of the type derived, um, we can cast this to the type derived and uh, use that type to index with the index we were given in the indexing operator function. Um, so it only delegates it to the real implementation. Um, we have an example vector class, which we instantiate with a size. Um, it only contains a member, which is a vector of that given size. And the indexing operator of vector returns the element that that index. And here we have a expression template type. It is instantiated with two types that implement, um, um, no, we call the constructor with two types that implement the uh, expression template pattern. Um, and the constructor stores references to these uh, interfaces as member variables. And the indexing operator 
returns the sum of the indexing operation applied to the source vectors. This allows us to create a vector sum here at the bottom. Um, the type of the vector sum is a vector addition of a vector and another vector addition of two vectors. So we have encoded into the type system a tree of operations to perform. And that is expression templates. Sort of. <laughs> um, so we have covered all, all the three core concepts. Now we can dig into the actual implementation of the library. At the bottom of uh, all the sequence objects, um, there is a common interface we all derive from, which is ienumerable. It is a template, templated type, which um, for which the type um, represents the type of the elements in the sequence. So if we have um, a sequence of integers, type would be int. Um, it only uh, defines two functions. Um, one is value, which returns the element at the current position in the sequence. The other is move next, which moves to the next element in the sequence. Move next also returns a boolean indicating if we have reached the end of the sequence. And one of these sequence objects is uh, initially um, not in a good state. You have to move to the next element to reach the first element in the sequence. If the first call to move next returns false, then the sequence is empty. Um, there is a core mixing type um, which contains all the functionality which is mixed into the objects like select and where in the, in the examples given earlier. Um, it is a template type that makes use of the curiously recurring template pattern. Um, the template parameter t is the type of the elements in the sequence and derived as the class which is going to inherit from a numerable base. Um, and here is an example of a function implemented, implemented in the mixin, a for each function which you can call with a sync function. Um, this function will be applied to all the all the ele elements in the sequence that this object represents. Um, we have an example here at the end where we obtain a sequence element sequence object and we call print in int on every member in the sequence. Um, then there is the enumerable function, which is overloaded for various kinds of containers. Here is an overload for, um, for statically sized arrays. Um, the template figures out the type of the array that is, that is, uh, that is wrapped in the call and also the size. And it simply returns an object of type array enumerable. Um, we pass along a reference to the source sequence or the source container as well as the size. And array enumerable itself inherits from enumerable base. T here is the same as all as before, it is the type of the elements in the sequence. And, um, since we need to pass 
the type that inherits from an memorable base to an memorable base, we need to fully specify it. Um, and the array memorable itself only contains three members. Um, it contains a reference to the source collection. It contains a index, how far along have we gone in the source array, and it also contains the size of the array, so we know where to end. Um, an example of what goes on behind the scenes when we're doing a sequence transformation. Um, here with where um, looks like this. Where is part of the enumerable based mixing. Um, we call where with a predicate function. And this predicate function, as well as the instance of the current sequence object, is passed to where enumerable. Um, like that. Um, we need to. Um, here's another example of why we need to use the curious recurring template pattern for this. So if we call where on an array enumerable, um, we need to be able to pass a copy of array enumerable to the constructor of where enumerable and not just an, a reference or a pointer to something that, that implements enumerable base. Um, this is the gist of the implementation of where enumerable. Constructor um, accepts a reference to a source object as well as the predicate function. It stores a copy, a full copy of the source sequence object as well as the uh, predicate function. Um, the value function in where enumerable simply returns the value in the source sequence while the move next has additional functionality. Um, as we call move next in the result of a where operation, we move the source sequence to the next element. And then we apply the predicate to the value in that source sequence. If the predicate is fulfilled, we return true because then we have moved to the next element and it was not the end. If the predicate isn't fulfilled, we will um, we will perform a loop. We will step the source sequence once again, apply the predicate. If we are lucky, it will uh, we, we will return. But uh, if we are unlucky, we will step through the whole source sequence and return end in the end. Um, so, uh, do you want, should we go through how this works uh, in this case, where we filter a source which is an array enumerable of integers? Okay. So, um, in the for all con function, we move to the next function and call print int for the value at that point in the sequence. Um, the, this sequence um, is where enumerable. So as we move to the next point in where enumerable, in the where enumerable sequence, we move to the first point in the sequence, which is array enumerable. Um, the predicate is uh, called for the value at the first position in array enumerable, which would be 1 in this case. Um, 1 is an odd number, so the predicate returns true. Um, where enumerable move next returns true and for all uses the value um, in the where sequence 
which is the value in the array sequence, which is 1. The next time, the next time for each uh, the for all calls um, steps the where sequence, where will step the array sequence, which will point to 2. We call is odd with 2, false is returned, which makes where a numberable move the source sequence again. Uh, it now points to 3, which is an odd number, which makes a uh, move next in where a numberable return true, and we print the value of 3. This um, sorry. Um, here? Yeah. Yeah. On the second line, the filter equals. Hmm. Filter is, is that a container or an iterator? Um, it's neither. Okay. It is an object which represents um, the filtering with is odd on array. Yeah, okay, I see. Yeah. Mm. So there's no actually no, no data copying? Really. No data copying until we call for all. Mm. Um, um, as we um, as we call where on an enumerable object, um, as we call enumerable with array, we, we obtain an array enumerable sequence representing object. We call where and that and obtain a where enumerable, um, which consists of a array enumerable and a predicate. So the structure of filter would be where enumerable, where source, source is array enumerable, which contains an array reference, an array size, and an array index. And filter also contains a filter predicate. So the object which represents the transformation is pretty small. Um, the size is known as compile time. It's very lightweight. It fits well on the stack and can be passed around with very little cost. Um, we can sort of see here that the object represents a tree of, op op of operations to perform on the sequence. Um, it's a pretty boring tree here. If it would, if we would use um, an operation. For example, a set difference between two source arrays, we would get something that looks more like a tree in this composition tree. Um, there are no heap allocations involved in the creation of these objects. Um, only at um, only at iteration time will there possibly be some um, heap allocations involved with, for example, set differences or unions. Um, and again, nothing is evaluated until it is iterated. And it is pretty easily, uh, things can be pretty easily extended with this base functionality. Um, we have a camera class that can, uh, that can take pictures for us. We can decorate it with the enumerable functionality by inheriting it from it, from by mixing in the functionality. Um, then we could uh, 
uh, we could create code like this, which takes pictures of people um, and disturbs people on Facebook, mm. or which takes uh, up to 800 pictures of faces and then performs uh, an average face calculation on that data. As we can see here, it's um, if we were to use this mixing functionality, it's pretty easy to reduce and uh, um, and clarify the algorithm that we want to perform. Um, I'm reaching the end of my presentation. Um, future work would be, be to implement more functionality in the mixing um, and to support third party extensions in the base mixing type. It would also be nice to perform some runtime and compile time reflection on these types to perform optimizations. Um, and and there is the hardest part, which is to market the library and get people to use it. Um, if you're interested um, to get started, go to the GitHub page, add and include, and you're ready to go. Thanks for listening to me. Maybe storing it is a good way to popularize it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes? Have you done any performance measurements of this compared to the other implementations that you showed in the beginning? Mm, I haven't done any performance uh, measurements. This uh, library is more about um, making it easier to do things rather than doing things as fast as as fast as possible. Sure. But mm. It would still be very interesting to know what the penalty would be to do it mm. this nicely. Mm. I don't recommend that you use this library in inner loops at the core of your application. But maybe further up and at uh, maybe file reading level or um, GUI or data logic um, at the logic level, if you were to use it, it might make your life easier and faster to implement. Yes? Is there anything you want? Do you want contributions? Do you want to work with this? Any special areas uh, except for those you mentioned? Hmm. Man. Anything, nothing special. Unit tests, um, marketing, twittering, um, more mixing functionality, um, a side project with performance tests. Performance tests. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is welcome. Do you intend to follow C sharp rigorously? Do you uh, make it sort of compatible with that uh, same thing? Um, sort of. Uh, not exactly. Not exactly. Um, C sharp has capital letters. That's okay to break. So I can read the documentation for C sharp and use it in the video library. That is the intention. Okay. Mm. Um, because if you're coming from being used to program in C sharp and then you want to express something in C++ and all of a sudden you can't but when there is this library and suddenly you can it makes your life a lot easier You're flirting with C sharp programmers <laughs> <laughs> Yes? Uh, did you say what version of C++ you required? No, no um, Somewhat modern Somewhat I modern try to keep it as ancient as possible, but uh, so C plus plus ninety eight is still you you're using something from C eleven or yes. Um, yeah, so the move operator. Um, <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> yeah. at least. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. And uh, lambda, that's all. Yeah. Hmm. 
We can still call it with uh, regular functions, um, pointers or normal functor objects as well. Um, but we say place where you use uh, decal val, so it's not. It requires some level of modernity. Yes. Is this like a preview to ranges, Eric Nibra? Uh, do you know the ranges library, Eric Nibra? Is uh, this like a preview or a documentation? Um, I didn't know about the ranges library when I started working on this. Um, but I think that this is uh, prettier. I don't like overloading the, um, the var operator. I think operator overloading besides plus minus etc. is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, this allows you to easily change things together. It's very hard to mess that up. Yes? So, us being C++ fans here, did you find anything that's actually better in C++ than in C Sharp? <laughs> <laughs> um, you mean in general or regarding this? Something is like, oh, look, we can do, it. We can do this in, in your library that you can't do in. Yeah. Um, one thing is here we can compose um, we can compose chain together functionality into a object which represents all those operations on the sequence in C sharp um, all of these um, calls turns into an object on the heap yeah. um, um, this makes use of templates and Templates within templates as members, so it's um, it's kind of hard to pass a specific um, um, a specific chain to a function specifically since you can't um, write a function that accepts a template type instantiated with a lambda in another function. Um, you can accept a reference to the I am a base class, or you can, um, or you can, um, you can put your uh, chain on the heap manually with um, dot make heap a number <coughs> and that turns into a heap object which represents the sequences um, or operations, uh, and you can easily accept it store it in a global variable, or store it in a member function, member variable, etc. Um, I think it's very nice that we have this control in C++. Yes? Yeah. <coughs> Just me asking, but um, using template magic here, uh, how have you tackled if you make something the wrong way and you get all these ugly template errors? Or, or you don't 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 make errors. <laughs> no. um, I think the compilers are getting better at producing re uh, readable error messages when you're working with templates. Um, but it would be cool to use um, concepts etc. to to make it harder to make errors. Yes? All these uh, methods like where, select many, etc., are they all declared in like one object that you mix in? Yes, currently. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So the enumerable base mix in contains everything. Yeah. Occasionally there are um, classes which are delegated to like the where enumerable. Um, all the core functionality resides in a single header and in a single template class. Okay, um, if you have any further questions, you can find me here for a while, maybe stalk me on GitHub or something. Um, thanks for having me. <laughs>